Hey there, Jen here, and this is a happy bit. You might have noticed that I've been mentioning some struggles with my 14 year old over the past several episodes. It's been hard. And today in this happy bit, I'm going to share what has been happening. Now, warning, this episode is a doozy and I've decided to be completely vulnerable and share as many details as I can. So you can know that, Hey, I too struggle. Now, if you've ever struggled with one of your kids or you're struggling with a teenager right now, then this happy bit is definitely for you. But first, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. You guys, I am obsessed with Knipe bath and body care products. Knipe is so good. It was founded in 1891 in Bavaria, Germany by a priest who happened to be the founder of the naturopathic and hydrotherapy movement. And everything he learned about herbal remedies has inspired the Knipe products today. My favorite Knipe product is the foot repair butter. Every summer, I have calluses and cracks on the heels of my feet. So this year, I vowed to find a solution. And Knipe Foot Repair Butter has done just that. The Foot Repair Butter has calendula and orange and shea butter and other moisture-retaining ingredients, along with rosemary essential oil, which promotes circulation and really revitalizes your feet. I love that little self-care routine at the end of the day, putting this on my feet, and they look so amazing. My feet look as good as my little girl's. No more old lady feet for me. <laughs> I love Knipe and I trust them because they are paraben free, cruelty free, vegan. They have no preservatives, paraffins, silicones, or mineral oils. It's all healthy and natural, nourishing ingredients that you will love on your skin. Last year, Knipe was awarded the Green Brand Seal for the third time. And this award only goes to brands that use environmentally sound practices that are sustainable. You have to try some of the Knipe products, especially the Foot Repair Butter or the bath oils ugh, to die for. And you can get 15% off your first order by going to kneipp.com and use promo code HAPPYWOMEN. Be sure to enter Happy Women in all caps at checkout. Again, get 15% off your first order at Knipe by going to kneipp.com and enter promo code HAPPYWOMEN in all caps at checkout. You know how so many families seem to have it all together? They seem perfect. Their kids seem amazing, like they have no problems. I'm starting to discover that's a facade and it doesn't exist. Okay, we all knew that was true, but sometimes we delude ourselves into thinking we're the only ones who struggle. And that's why I wanna share my story today. My story of really struggling with my kids. So a little backstory. I interviewed Gretchen Rubin, author of The Happiness Project and The Four Tendencies a couple of weeks ago. And Gretchen Rubin created a quiz called the Four Tendencies Quiz. And in that quiz, you discover which type you are out of four. And here are the four types. Questioner. They resist outer expectations, but they meet their own inner expectations. Upholders. They meet outer expectations and they meet their own inner expectations. Obligers. They meet outer expectations, but they don't meet their own inner expectations. They are the people pleasers of the world. And finally, the rebels. They resist outer expectations and they resist inner expectations. Guess what my family is made up of? <laughs> all questioners and all rebels. Crazy town. Okay, my youngest daughter, Cora, is four. And maybe it'll turn out she's something different. But based on what I see in her behavior and based on how everyone else answered the questionnaire, we have a family of questioners and rebels. So I shared this with Gretchen on the interview, and you'll get to hear this in episode 116 that's coming in June 2018. But she kind of commented, wow, you know, that's kind of hard. <laughs> and so I felt validated, maybe for the first time, because no one quite understands my kids. And they make the assumption that I am failing as a parent, which I know I have in many, many ways. But they make the assumption that I've done something seriously wrong to have these kids who are so stubborn and opinionated and strong and independent, the full on rebel questioner personality. And so I felt my share of shame and guilt over my really strong willed kids. They don't have a lot of need to meet outer expectations. They just don't really care. And that means they're not driven by social norms. They're not driven to please other people. 
And that can be really tricky. So I've had to really finesse them and help them learn how to want to do things themselves. I've always said we live in a household with eight alphas. And this is truly true because everyone is driven by this need to meet their own inner expectations, to do what they want and to do it at any cost, often without concern for how others might feel. So what has this looked like? Well, I've mentioned in the past few episodes how I've been struggling, especially with my 14-year-old who is a high school freshman. And somehow this spring, he has fallen into a group of friends that is not a good influence at all. So what did this lead to? Well, over spring break, my son just kind of went AWOL. He decided to go spend the entire spring break with friends. He wouldn't tell us where he was. And of course we panicked, right? And this behavior continued. He started missing more and more school. And we're thinking, what happened to our sweet, amazing son? You know, so this has gone on and on for weeks and we decided we needed to get serious about helping him change this pattern he has been stuck in. And so we enrolled him in a therapeutic wilderness program recently in Arizona. And I won't go into all the details of getting him there, but it was hugely traumatizing. And I use the word traumatizing because that's how it felt to me. I made the choice to get him there based on the way I can interact with him more easily than my husband can. My son was highly resistant a danger to himself and everything that could go wrong did go wrong. However, miracle by miracle by miracle, I kid you not, (laughs) he is now safely enrolled in the program. It's called Anasazi, A-N-A-S-A-Z-I. And it's based on the idea that we can walk toward the light or we can walk toward the darkness. And there's this huge Native American theme. It was actually co-founded by Ezekiel Sanchez, who is Native American. And it just had the best feeling, just the best feeling. So I was really, really excited. And so what did I do after I dropped him off? I felt so delicate, so hurt, so traumatized using that word again. So I decided to book a few extra days in the area. I went up to Sedona, Arizona, for a couple of days. Beautiful. If I could move anywhere, I would move there. I went to the Grand Canyon for the first time and was awestruck. Beautiful. Everything was just so nurturing. And I took this time to heal my heart after that really traumatic time with my son and to prepare myself to go back to Wisconsin and be there for my other kids. One of the exercises that Anasazi gave my husband and I was to watch a sunrise. And when I did it, I noticed that the sun so, so, so gradually changed. It felt like I would look away briefly and then look back and, oh, it's a little bit brighter. And then I would look away again, look at the view in Sedona and then look back. Oh, wow, it's even brighter. And this continued for 20, 25 minutes until pop, the sun was over the horizon. And the thought came to me, the light is what pushes out the darkness. The light is what pushes out the darkness. What does that mean? I have spent so much time this spring telling my son, you can't do that. You can't do this. You've got to go to school. You can't be with these people. And I was trying to demand that the darkness not be a part of his life. But I'm positive after watching that sunrise that a more effective way would be to introduce more light to his life, to focus on what he's doing well, to add more fun and connection and praise and all of the things that make us feel good, that add light. And then slowly that light, just like a sunrise, will push away the darkness. And that's just one of many amazing things I've been learning and focusing on. Another thing that I've learned recently, and thank heavens for the timing of this, a few weeks ago, I attended a conference called Mindful Self-Compassion taught by Kristen Neff, who is also going to be on the podcast on episode 121 in July. But in that conference, she taught all of us in attendance, about 300 of us, how to engage in self-compassion or compassion with other people. And what is compassion? It is loving, connected presence. 
at the root of being an effective parent, we have to be deeply at peace and compassionate with ourselves, loving, connected presence. When our heart is at peace rather than at war, when our heart is looking for the light rather than trying to focus too much on the darkness, we can be in that space of loving, connected presence. And then we can show up for our kids with love and mindfulness and kindness and connection and all the things that increase that light. And that was so critical for me getting through these last couple of weeks, getting my son down to Anasazi. Now, I have no idea what the outcome will be, but I am choosing to hold a vision of my son's greatness, of the amazing person I know he will grow to be, all the lives he will touch as a result of his experiences right now. I'm just going forward, doing what I can to be very self-compassionate, to recognize that, yes, Jen, this has been hard, engaging in loving and self-compassionate self-talk, and then taking that same energy out to my family, my husband, my other kids, when I write letters to my son in Arizona. And so that's what I've been struggling with lately. And I share this in the spirit of vulnerability and authenticity. So you know that my life too can be hard, but I want to share something. After I dropped my son off at the program, and it was a traumatizing day using that word for the third time because he was so very resistant and aggressive about the whole thing. I went back to my hotel room and just cried these racking sobs. I can't describe to you the pain and the weight that was crushing down on me. But then I remembered self-compassion, self-talk. Jen, this has been hard. You are a rock star. Look what you did. You loved your son enough to get him some help. You loved your son enough to get him here and to be strong. And I messaged my husband and told him everything that had happened. And he said, you are hardcore. I couldn't have done it. And all of this combined just gave me the strength to once again, rise up and say, hey, this is part of the human condition. Every one of us suffers. Every one of you listening suffers. But do you take the time to be self-compassionate to engage in that loving, connected presence with yourself. That is my challenge for you today. Take a moment today and acknowledge your own suffering. It is part of the human condition. And to be kind and be connected to how you're feeling and carry that loving, connected presence, as Kristen Neff would say, out into the world. Always start your day tapping back into that loving, connected presence. And that's why I talk again and again about meditation, where you understand what you're feeling, what you're thinking, the sensations in your body, and be kind and observant without judgment with what is happening inside of you. And then to go forth and take that strongest part of yourself to share that same beautiful compassion with others. It helps you to feel connected. It helps you to feel whole. Again, I don't know what the future holds, but I know that this struggle has made me better. I have confidence in my ability to face almost anything because I have a tool of how to tap into how I'm feeling and allow myself to feel it, to heal it, and to... Stay in the energy of having a heart at peace, even when life is hard. And that is my happy bit for you today. Thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable. And I tried to share in a way that respects my son's right to privacy, but also to share some of the story. So some of you out there experiencing something similar can know you are not alone. Be compassionate with yourself. Increase the light and it will push out that darkness. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast at www.jenriday.com.